This story takes place in 2017, when I was working at a call center for a major casino in my hometown of New Orleans, Louisiana. I was heading down to the employee break room to get something to eat when I was approached by a man who worked for the security department. He had been standing at a computer kiosk that was in the hallway. He was about six foot five, skinny build, and dark skinned. Excuse me, miss, I'm a new hire. I was wondering if you could help me with putting in my vacation days, he asked me politely. Sure, I said to him. As I proceeded to show him the quick and easy process of filling out the paid time off request, he told me, my name is Tevin, by the way. What's yours? Charlotte, I told him. Charlotte, he repeats. A very pretty name for a very pretty girl. Thank you, I replied. You should be all set with your vacation days now. Thanks so much for helping me. You should let me take you out as a token of my appreciation. His offer caught me off guard, and I hesitated before I gently declined saying, oh, that's not necessary. I'm not dating right now. You should at least give me your number or something so I can text you if I have any more questions, Tevin says. Unable to resist my penchant for being overly nice, I compromise. Tell you what, how about I give you my Facebook information and if you have a question, you can message me there. Damn girl, I see how it is. All right, cool. When I went home later that night, I saw that I had a friend request from Tevin. As soon as I accepted it, he quickly began messaging me. After a few basic, hey, how are you's, he immediately began trying to ask me out again, saying, you wanna come over tonight until I shower and we can walk through the park and enjoy the night breeze? I'm not comfortable with that, I tell him flatly. He tells me, I don't have anyone to hang out with. My roommate and I walked down the nature trail at the park the first day we moved to New Orleans and I thought it would be nice to take a date there and enjoy the cool night breeze. I'm not a crazy guy. I just want someone to accept me for me and be willing to put their all into me. When I didn't reply, he apologized. I knew at that moment that I needed to proceed with caution if I was going to continue to talk to him. The next morning, Tevin texted me good morning and asked if I would go to the park with him later that evening. Despite my unease with his persistent advances, I found myself torn between being polite and maintaining my boundaries. Despite my reservations, I couldn't shake the sense of guilt for potentially hurting his feelings. Against my better judgment, I found myself contemplating his invitation to the park, thinking it wouldn't hurt to give him another chance. Maybe he just needed someone to show him kindness and understanding. I reluctantly agreed to meet with him, hoping that my instincts were wrong and that this would turn out to be a harmless outing. I was dead wrong. We met up at the park around 5 p.m. that evening. Tevin greeted me with a warm smile, and for a moment, my apprehensions faded away. The air was cool and crisp, with the faint scent of magnolia blossoms lingering in the breeze. As we walked along the nature trail, Tevin told me stories about his life growing up in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and how he was bullied and experienced racism. His vulnerability tugged at my heartstrings. Before the date was over, I ended up giving him my phone number. Despite my initial reservations, I found myself drawn to his charisma and charm, or so I thought. About an hour after we parted ways after the park, I was shopping at a local clothing boutique when I got a text from Tevin that made my blood boil. He said, hey, if you don't mind, can I borrow $10 and pay you back Thursday? I was taken aback by Tevin's ridiculous request. Borrowing money from someone he barely knew felt incredibly inappropriate. My initial sympathy for a situation quickly turned to frustration and anger. It seemed clear that Tevin's intentions were not as innocent as I had hoped. I ignored his message. Several minutes later, he asked me what I was doing and if he ran me off by asking me for $10. After I left the store, I simply replied to him that I would not be loaning him any money. Within the next hour or so, he proceeded to ask me where I was driving to and why I was ignoring him. He then brazenly asked me if I was seeing someone else, which was mystifying to me because we just met a few days before and it really wasn't his business. Nevertheless, I replied and admitted that I was indeed single and not talking to anyone else. Tevin then started to call and text me multiple times, apologizing for his strange behavior and promising to do better. I ignored him. The next day, I was sitting in the employee break room when he spotted me and sat down at the small table with me. Hey Charlotte, he greeted me with a forced smile, his tone marked with a hint of desperation. I just wanted to apologize again for yesterday. I know I came on too strong and I'm really sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I nodded stiffly, unsure of how to respond. While part of me appreciated his attempt at an apology, another part of me couldn't shake the feeling that his behavior had crossed a line. I'll back off and give you some space, he continued, his eyes pleading for forgiveness. I just really like talking to you, you know? You're different from anyone I've met before. You're smart, college educated, beautiful, patient, and kind. Thanks, I muttered 
plastering on a weak smile. I appreciate that. Tevin nodded eagerly, as if relieved by my response. So, uh, do you want to maybe grab lunch together sometime? Just as friends, of course. No pressure. I don't know, Tevin. I'm not trying to date right now, and I really, really don't like it when people blow up my phone like that. It'll never happen again, I promise, Tevin says, cutting me off. Just please, please let me make it up to you. We can meet at the Po' Boy Palace downtown. My treat. Okay, Tevin, I sighed, giving in to his persistence. I'll give you another chance, but please let's take things slow and keep it casual. Tevin's eyes lit up as he nodded and smiled eagerly. Thank you, Charlotte. I won't let you down. I promise. He said as he abruptly got up and left the table and began speed walking out of the employee break room. The next day, I found myself nervously anticipating my lunch date with Tevin. Despite my reservations, I couldn't deny a sense of curiosity about him and a desire to see if he would follow through on his promises. As I entered the bustling restaurant, I saw Tevin sitting at a table and a hopeful smile lighting up his face as he waved me over. Taking a deep breath, I nervously made my way towards him. Hey Charlotte, Tevin greeted me warmly with a bear hug. I'm so glad you could make it. As we began to chat over our plates of delicious po' boys, I found myself surprisingly at ease in Tevin's company. He was charming and attentive and even funny at times and showed a genuine interest in getting to know me. As we headed out of the restaurant afterwards, Tevin asked, do you want to come back over to my place and watch a couple movies? Oh no, Tevin, I really should be getting home. Just for a few minutes, I won't try anything, I promise. Tevin, I had a really good time, but I don't feel comfortable. Then what if we just sit in my car for a few minutes and listen to some music? Tevin says quickly. Reluctantly, I agreed, swayed by Tevin's persistent begging. Okay, just for a few minutes. As we settled into the car, Tevin turned on the music and we sat in silence for a few moments. But then, without warning, his demeanor shifted. Before I could react, he locked the doors and leaned in close, his breath hot against my ear. You shouldn't have ignored me, he says, only two to three inches from my face. Without warning, he began choking me. Panic surged through me as I struggled against his grasp. Clawing desperately at his arms and frantically trying to plot my escape, I finally managed to reach for my keys, which my pepper spray was attached to, and I hit him with. With a surge of adrenaline, I aimed it at Tevin's face and I sprayed. Ah, shit! He screamed as the sting of the pepper spray hit his eyes and mouth. Seizing the opportunity, I unlocked the car door and stumbled out, gasping for air as I put as much distance between us as possible. I managed to quickly run to my car and call for help as I drove out of the parking lot, fearful of what would happen if Tevin caught up to me. I drove home to my apartment and as I waited for the authorities to arrive, my mind raced with a jumble of emotions. Fear anger and disbelief at what had just transpired. How could someone who claimed to be so interested in getting to know me turn out to be so dangerous? Minutes later, the sound of sirens pierced the air as I saw police cars arrive in the parking lot through my living room window. I rushed downstairs and anxiously recounted the terrifying ordeal to the officers, my voice quivering with emotion as I described Tevin's sudden attack. They also took photos of the bruises around my throat. I then showed them Tevin's incessant calls and texts from the days prior. The officers listened attentively as they took in the details of the incident. With compassion and professionalism, they assured me that they would do everything in their power to apprehend Tevin and ensure that justice was served. In the days that followed, I leaned on the support of my friends and family, who all vowed to protect me if he tried to come near me again. I decided to take a few days off work to process everything that had transpired. The next afternoon, I got a call from one of the officers investigating my case, who told me that Tevin had been arrested at work. He advised me to get an order of protection against him as well, to ensure that he couldn't hurt me anymore, and I agreed without hesitation. When it was all said and done, Tevin ended up doing six months in jail and had to participate in a court-approved domestic abuse prevention program. I later learned that he used to beat up his previous girlfriend and did time a few years back for domestic violence. Thankfully, after his conviction, I never saw or heard from him ever again. The experience with Tevin served as a stark reminder of the importance of setting boundaries and listening to my instincts. I vowed never to ignore the warning signs again, no matter how uncomfortable or awkward it might feel. If you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, please visit the National Domestic Violence Hotline's website or call 1-800-799-SAFE. I have additional resources in the description box below.